ask yourself this question. When was the last time that you overstepped? And again, it doesn't mean that you succeeded by overstepping, but it does mean that you were pushing. It does mean that you were living with audacity. And if you are constantly living with audacity, constantly pushing yourself, constantly overstepping, you will find the ability to, to expand the, your borders and you will begin to really manifest your great potential. The big problem is that voice in our heads that says, you know, be happy with what you have. It's better than where you came from. You know, th there's an understanding that, you know, I think we often think, you know, I am who I am and I can either reveal it or not reveal it. I can do it or not do it. But the reality is that we become what we do. To know that without connecting consistently to your source, the place we came from, the place we end up at, back again, as long as you're connected to that, then you really can't take anything too seriously. Not the negative, not the positive. Instead, you're just a being, a channel that right. constantly looks for ways to expand. Welcome to the Spiritually Hungry Podcast, episode 35. Yay! I knew it was 35. Sure. <laughs> uh, last week, we touched upon how little we know and how little understanding we have of the world around us and of ourselves. So this week, we're really going to dive deep into the lack of understanding we have of ourselves as it relates to our perceived competence and potential abilities, which I'm really excited about. I like this topic. So bottom line is nobody has the ability to examine oneself with perfect objectivity. I know I hate that word, but we're going to use it a lot today. With any objectivity, Forget about perfect objectivity. Some do a better job than others, perhaps you. And there's something called, which we've spoken about, and um, I don't think you've ever experienced this firsthand. Not yet. There's something called imposter syndrome and Dunning-Kruger effect. And it, they exist at the far end of the same spectrum. They're both a grossly flawed self-assessment of one's abilities. So the imposter syndrome is not about having low self-esteem or lack or self-worth. What it is about is the feeling that your achievements don't matter. Explain that. So your so achievements don't matter. So you've that you, written a book. Right. So basically you only scraped by in life because you got lucky or you wrote the okay. book by chance. Um, and therefore, it doesn't matter because you didn't really earn you it. You didn't earn really it. You're basically from, a fraud uh -huh. in what you've done, in your work, what you do. And it's this feeling all the time, like you're a fraud and you're going to be found out. So therefore you feel insecurity about your work and your accomplishments because you don't feel that you actually earned them. Now, that one is actually uh, something I have felt before. And as I was preparing for today, um, it gave myself some credit, some credit because I am halfway like past getting over this, but I was really surprised by like, there's certain characteristics, which I'll go into that I absolutely do have. And that I have exhibited, um, in my work and in my life. So, uh, yeah. I'm wondering, so it, obviously it doesn't allow one to enjoy their accomplishments, right? Correct. So I mean, you've heard me say before, like I'm, I never celebrate right? right after I've done something, it's on to the next thing. So I thought that was something wrong with yeah, that I, I didn't take time to appreciate, which is part of it. But it's really like it goes hand in hand with this kind of um, belief and system. And it probably hinders one's ability to further accomplish. Correct. Because everything you do, then it's like, okay, I did that. But that really wasn't mine. So you then go on this vicious cycle right of searching I, I for can. the next thing. Right. And then you feel like a fraud all over again. And then you're like, oh my God, I may be found out at any time. Sounds um, uh, tiring. It is. And it was first described by psychologist Susan Imus in 1970. It's the imposter phenomenon. And it, but this made me feel a little bit better. It occurs among high achievers uh, <laughs> who are unable so to not a high achiever. <laughs> <laughs> internalize or accept their success. So the characteristics are a habitual thought pattern. It affects both in men and women, seems to be slightly more prevalent in women. Um, it's more common among minorities and, um, and it can fuel the sense of being a fraud. Now, I do want to go into, oh, and there's one other thing. So there's three defining features of this imposterism. The first is feeling that other people have an inflated perception of your abilities, which mm -hmm. then creates a lot of pressure internally to succeed. I have felt that. Second is a fear that your true abilities will be found out, which you don't think are great. And third, a persistent 
tendency to attribute success to external factors such as luck or disproportionate effort, right? One of these things that you spend a lot, a lot of extra time over preparing, right? I've done that too. So as I was reading it, you know, I kind of almost fell off my chair. Um, And then ironically, of course, these feelings then of fraud inspire greater effort and thus leading to more success and promotion, thereby triggering another round of the imposter feeling. So I just want to quickly go into what the Dunner Kruger is, Dunning Kruger. I thought this was so interesting and quite, quite honestly, a little bit comical. It's an effect um, is a hypothetical, hypothetical cognitive bias stating that people with low ability at a task overestimate their ability. <laughs> okay. All people or, or some people? All that, that are, that, that have, that this. have this. So it's the opposite. It's the opposite side of imposter um, syndrome. syndrome. So this was described by, so by psychologist David Dunning and Justin Kruger. But this, I just want to give you the story. because okay. I thought this was really funny. It reminds you of a story. story. Okay. Tell me after, because this yeah. is um, one day in 1995, a large, heavy middle-aged man robbed two Pittsburgh banks in broad daylight. Sadly, this is a true story. Okay. He didn't wear a mask or any sort of disguise. And he smiled at surveillance cameras before walking out of each bank. Later that night, police arrested a surprised <laughs> Macau- <laughs> arrested a surprised MacArthur Wheeler. When they showed him the surveillance tapes, Wheeler stared in disbelief. So as I read this, I'm thinking, like, what could he have been thinking? Well, maybe he wasn't there. Okay. <laughs> But I wore the juice, he mumbled. Apparently, juice. Wheeler thought that rubbing lemon juice on his skin would render him invisible to videotape cameras. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would think this. I was actually laughing, thinking about what your response would be as I read this. <laughs> I wore the juice. I One like After all, <laughs> lemon juice that. is used as invisible ink. So as long as he didn't come near a heat source, he should have been completely <laughs> invisible. What was his IQ? It can't be that high. That's the point, right? Okay. <laughs> Police concluded that Wheeler was not crazy or on okay. drugs, just, just incredibly, stu- they said mistake, but stupid, right? But what, so, was the word, what was the word that you Mistaken. Mistaken. <laughs> uh, you are incredibly mistaken uh, dim, <laughs> about your level right. of your intelligence. <laughs> so the saga caught the eye of psychologist David Dunning at Cornell, Cornell University, who enlisted his graduate student. I love student. that moment. That, 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 <laughs> the I can just imagine. I used the juice. <laughs> I wore the juice. <laughs> so okay. it caught the eye of, of the psychologist. And they then did a lot of research behind this. Um, so they reasoned that while almost everyone holds favorable views of their abilities in various social intellectual everybody, domains, everybody? variable, okay. right? Varied degrees. Some people mistakenly assess their abilities as being much higher than they actually are. <laughs> this illusion of confidence is now called Dunning-Kruger effect. Uh-huh. It describes the cognitive bias right, of self-assessment. So yeah, I thought that was fascinating. The other thing they found, and then I want to hear your story, but I thought this was really interesting too, they found that um, they also study people's self-assessment the in the moral domain. And okay. they unearthed what they call holier-than-thou syndrome. And that this is... This is scientific. Um, this is scientific, okay. and this is part of their study, that these are people who overrated the likelihood that they would act in a generous and selfless way. So it's it's another kind of syndrome, mm-hmm. but it's like they think, of course, you know, if they had to give, they would give X amount. Or if they had to help a person in this scenario... Mostly people tend to think they would do more and give more than they actually do. But that's kind of like off the... Most people or or some some people? Well, this was... um, They took graduate students at Harvard University and they found these undergraduates. So it was a group that they did. And then they took... They did this. And in the study, 84% of the students initially predicted they would cooperate with their partners. Another thing in that effect. But only 61% did. So the point Mm -hmm. is, in all these studies people came much lower than they actually thought. Interesting. Um, but what was your funny story? Having to do with this effect? Well, no, just if you remember many, many years ago when one of our children was about <laughs> six or seven years old. He was eight, he, nine. He was eight or nine, okay. I shouldn't have said the sex. Okay, one of them, <laughs> And yes. um, he was uh, taking gymnastics. <laughs> and one day, I don't know if we, what, I don't know, for whatever reason, there was like a, like a final, it was the last day, and they were like doing final trials. Well, they were supposed to go through everything, like the bar, the balance beam, the trampoline. <laughs> and and then it was for trophies and such. And, and he, he loves no, a good award, by the way. Yeah. And he goes just for the trophy. But he had no idea what he was doing. It was like, it was comical how... 
but he literally, literally he, he went through Dunner, it very no, poorly. Dunner Kruger, yeah. like he really believed in yes. his ability, <laughs> and you could see on his face he's like sweating, whatever. But with such like there was no way he wasn't going to do it. And I'm like, oh my god, please don't get hurt. <laughs> we were sweating yes. watching that. Yes. yes, yes, it's true. No, so right, so these show different ways by which we view ourselves in a dis- distorted lens. And I think, again, I'm not sure what the science on this is, but what I have seen is that often we underestimate certainly our potential and what we can do. And I think it's important to know that there actually is a force, and this is where the spiritual understanding comes in, that there is a force that is with us from the moment we're born, that its job is to diminish ourselves in our own eyes. and. Does this force have a name? It has many different names, right? But it, it's it's within us. Um, again, sometimes you know, in the ancient texts are referred to as the negative inclination. But the understanding is that this is pro- probably every single for I'm th- saying for you and for me and for every one of our listeners, probably the 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 greatest reason why any of us is not living fully to our potential of what we are meant and can do is because we have bought in to this voice and that's i would i think it's important we understand that's a given even as i sit here now you know i'd like to think that i do important things and and to get things accomplished at the end of the day there's still still i have bought in it's been 47 years with that voice in my head and yes i battle it and maybe we'll talk about how we do that but every single one of our listeners has had this voice from the moment we were born and I think about but it because... But what's the purpose, number one? And number two, there's certain times, if that's true, that we were better at ignoring it. A two-year-old's not really listening to well, that voice. Well, that's the point. So, so I was going to say, think about it. We know children, right? I mean, even even we have conversations, even with our you know teenagers and certainly younger, they they really believe that the world is their canvas and that they can they just decide. They want to be an actor. They want to be an it's astronaut. They want to be a doctor. It's, it's theirs, mm-hmm. Right. We know for a fact a baby when it's born, he or she can learn any language, right? A baby from the from the age of zero is spoken to in Chinese. They will speak Chinese. A child who's spoken to in English will speak English. I mean, you throw it, them in water, they're going to swim. I mean, the, well, early on, no, part, you yes, do it right yes, away. Yes. They, they were in water. We're not, not that we are recommending <laughs> any one of our listeners to throw their babies in water, but yes, yes. Um, I remember this is maybe this is an impolite story to share, but I remember well, who is it about? Before, it's no, it's about, about us. Me. <laughs> it's about us. Before um, our youngest child was born, and you were you had decided you were going to do uh, hypnobirthing, mm. right? So unfortunately, you made us watch a few videos. If you remember, uh, of course I remember. Yes, I'm so yes. happy we did that. It was very, <laughs> anyway, very the, powerful. The and is, by yes, the way, yes. part of the reason, and by I didn't listen to that negative voice. I absolutely what I saw is what I created. Right, right. But my point is, in some of those, I guess it was are, scary for you because you weren't <laughs> going to scary. physically be doing that yourself. Um, but that you know, sort of babies born into water, right? Like you said, uh, swim. So the point is clearly, <laughs> a, a Baby, I'm just thinking about your reaction to when you were watching the videos. You really like, don't remember. I don't know if you'd want to admit that publicly. Yes, you were like, "What?" Okay, go ahead. Um, babies. Yes. So clearly, babies' children are at a different place of 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 accepting their potential than we are, and literally, what happens, and that's why, yes, babies, and then there's that voice, conscious, unconscious, also society begins diminishing our belief, understanding of our own potential. But what's the purpose of the voice? Well, there's, one of them is, is to make sure that we earn. It, it, there is, and this is writ large in human history, and this is true for every one of our personal lives, there is a battle between light and darkness. That's the reality of our world. You know, there, this is another topic, but in our world, we know this, the, the, what they're called the builders of the world, those who are trying to make the world better, and there are the destroyers of the world. There are those who are out there, uh, in every generation you have them, who are trying to destroy people and, 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 and the world. So that is, in, in, in basic terms, the battle between light and darkness. And that is true, as it's true in the world, it's true within each one of us. So from the moment we're born, that battle begins. And that voice, as, as we said, is in our, our mind. It remains with us until leave, we leave this physical world. The, the purpose 
of this podcast, the purpose of our lives is to fight that voice. And I often say this, if any one of us had even a glimpse of how powerful we actually are, potentially, we would be living completely different lives. Mm -hmm. And really what I hope that, that our listeners take from, from this podcast is more of an awakening to understand that what you thought of yourself as a baby and as a child, basically that you can accomplish anything that you will choose to put your mind to, that was true. So, you know, I think sometimes people look back and say, oh, I was, you know, immature. I was, you know, I, 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 I had, you know, pie in the sky. No, the reality, you saw, that's when you saw the reality about yourself. When you got older and you kept listening to that voice and you kept listening to that, you know, family member who kept telling you you can't amount to much and so on and so forth. And then you went into society and so on and you get, that voice kept getting louder and louder. That's what's not true. That's the falsehood. It almost seems unfair for people who don't have this awareness and they go through life and they don't realize, right, that there are these rules and laws of the universe and things that they're unaware of that is happening all the time thing to fight against, right? And they just look around and say, okay, well, you know, I'm just not that smart or I'm unlucky or, and, and they never, and that's why actually the, these two, um, the Kruger, the Dunning-Kruger, effect and the imposter syndrome. It's interesting to me because I think a lot of people do suffer from that and then they just stay in that state. They never actually change it. Right. And you know me, I'm all about pushing the envelope and I'm not going to just accept if something doesn't feel like it's working. I really take the time to break it apart and figure out a way to make it work. And I remember as before my first book came out, it was like six months before and I was like, I'm a fraud. You know, I had this thought and like, is this really original? And by the way, it's semi-autobiographical. So I was even trying to talk myself into believing that this wasn't even um, something new and different. And then I realized that's just not the person that I want to be and that I connected to something far greater. And, you know, the the real thing is I looked around me to two people that were really in my mind they never actually, the thought that, like the, the thought children have or teenagers have, that the world is theirs. They see something, they want it, and naturally, of course, it's going to happen. Not only is it going to happen, it's going to happen to the best, that it can, the best possible outcome. And I thought, wow, I really need some of that audacity, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that. But instead of um, creating obstacles and challenges for myself, because I also believe, and that's part of the imposter syndrome, not only do you over-prepare and all of that, but you also set yourself up with the mindset that it's going to be difficult, it's going to be very hard. And through that stress and that great extra effort, that's how you achieve. And then I, I looked at these people that were really, that I respected and that were successful in the ways that they wanted to be. And I said, well, I'm just going to adapt that mentality, right? I'm, I'm not going to do this. I chose something else. And so, like I said, I'm much further along, but it, it is interesting when you, when you flip this concept and you connect to the other voice, right? The one that is kind and that is good. And you connect to, of course, you are meant to have all of these great things. Then you tap into that potential of yourself. But it, it just, it's its really a choice. Well, it's a choice, but it's also, and this is something that I hope our listeners will take in. It's also an, an awareness of how much untapped potential we have. For me, and, and again, like I said, I, I've been, I would hope, doing important things, things that help people for many, many years now. But even as I sit here now, I know that I am only beginning to maybe understand how powerful my pot potentially I am. And I actually think, and one of the things that I, that I would like our listeners to do, I believe every single one of us, every single day, needs to remind ourselves. I have so much powerful potential within me. If you don't remind yourself at least every day of this, you're not going to be able to tap in. You could want to, you could desire it. But if you don't rem actively remind yourself, remind yourself, I have so much power. I have so much potential to reveal in this world. And you remind yourself at least once a day, if not a few times a day. And it's interesting, as you were saying, audacity, this, it's, as I was thinking about this concept, and it is something that I think is fundamental to, to success, it's, it's fundamental to happiness, 
there were three words that kept coming to, to my mind. Audacity is one of them. And the reality is, we have to be living with audacity, right? And then related to that, there was the word, you know, to push. Because you can know that you need to live with audacity, and you can even know what we said earlier, that you remind yourself of your tremendous power and potential, but unless you're pushing for that to be revealed. And the third thing, all related, is to overstep. You know, there's always this concept, you know, you shouldn't overstep, right? There's your boundary, I, right? I you shouldn't overstep. But what we're saying is, no, you must overstep. Your boundary that somebody else has imposed upon you? Or that you've put upon you. Like you can only do this much or right, go because, that far. Exactly. And if you realize, again, as you, the listener, you're, wherever you are right now, there's a boundary around you. That boundary is made up of things people have told you, of things you've told yourself, things of things you believe about yourself. Mm-hmm. You, we each, we, like if you, if you asked, if you asked me or you and or any one of our listeners, you know what is, and if you took the time, what is the maximum in whatever area of your life you're, you're writing, you're teaching, or whatever you're, you're you're creating a podcast, whatever you're doing in life, what's the outermost limit? Honestly, there's a boundary around that. Unless, I call it prison. I call it self-imposed prison. Yes, yes, but but again, it's it's a prison that most of us are comfortable with, and most of, course, of us self-imposed, are maybe not even aware that those boundaries were meant to be broken. And therefore, out of those three words, live with audacity. Like, you know, be a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. Push, 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 and overstep. Overstep. And and now what I I would recommend to our listeners is, is really ask, when was the last time you can honestly say you overstepped? Now, by the way, you won't always be right, and you won't always succeed. But the only way towards making sure that you're going to fulfill your true potential is if you're always overstepping. And and I would again I would I would ask our our listeners to ask yourself this question. When was the last time that you overstepped? And again, it doesn't mean that you succeeded by overstepping, but it does mean that you were pushing. It does mean that you were living with audacity. And if you are constantly living with audacity, constantly pushing yourself, constantly overstepping, you will find the ability to to expand the your borders, right? Your prison, if you want to call it, or simply your boundaries that you you and those around you have set up, and you will begin to really manifest your great potential. I think part of the way to begin to overstep is to stop with all the labeling. You know, when kids are growing up, um, I know I'm one of we're three sisters, and you know it's easy for parents to like, oh, this is the athletic one. This is the pretty one. This is the kind one. And um, I'm assuming you all three. No, you're so (laughs) sweet. And then you start to think of yourself in those limited ways, right? You're not going to be more than that. Or you compare yourself to other people. And I think we also label people around us all the time. Like, oh, that person is a barista um, or this person is, uh, you know, an ambulance driver, whatever it is. And then we assign only certain people to be able to um, influence us and inspire us. And and we do that to ourselves as well when it's so limiting to look. I mean, everybody can become anything and everything they want to be. The big problem is that voice in our heads that says, you know, be happy with what you have. It's better than where you came from. Or those borders, right? Yeah. And and I, and again, say the three again, audacious. So, Audacity, and I remember those pushing, two people I told you about, Wait, I want to unpack yeah. them slowly. Yeah. Audacity. Those two people I told you about, I remember I would tell you like they're, they're, they're something like they're a little bit crazy, right? And, you know, why do they think that, of course, these things should, it makes no sense. And when I stopped, and I remember having an aversion to it because I didn't think I could, I could ever be a little like that, right? Then I, when I questioned that silly thought and I challenged it, then I was like, okay, yeah, I'm all in. I'm going to jump to the other side. Um, then you, you, that's the first part of breaking the chains, right? And then the second one? Pushing. So meaning? Do something. Break, so, break, so actually taking an action step right. to break the chains. Right. And then the third is as soon as you do that and you've now removed the bars, then you need to expand the yardage, right? right. Make sure you expand it a mile, then two miles, then 50 miles and so on and so forth till it's limitless. I mean, we do get that question a lot. Like, oh, you know, you've achieved this, that, whatever. I, I don't even like hear it because if I ever took any of that seriously, I'd probably stop expanding the borders. Absolutely. And I want to sh- relate it to that. I want to share something which, it's funny, I had this thought yesterday, and it's, it's an important one. When we talk about manifesting our potential, when we talk about, we're, we're first saying that 
we are all underestimating, every single one of us, underestimating our great potential. By the way, even those who are doing fairly a good job yes, at this, yes. still there's, there's, you can keep pushing. Limitless. And then we're talking about how to live with audacity, push, and overstep. It's not for the purpose of what people will then think about us, right? It's at the basic core of our being, we need to bring this to the world. So for example, you know, I'm actually going to read a letter soon, uh, one of our listeners who uses their experience to help others who are going through the same challenges that she went through. The right way to view that is not that, you know, and I'm assuming this is true for her, not that now the people who she's helped think kindly of her or think, oh, wow, she's an amazing person, she's a helpful... What, what, really, it's that in order for me to be happy, in order for my soul to be content, I need to be bringing it out to the world. Whether a thousand people think great about it, or one person does, or zero people do, it's not about... Because I want to be careful... Because the ego could, again, it's not the end of the world if a person listens to this podcast, starts living with audacity and pushes and oversteps and accomplishes great things. Overstepping and also sounds negative, by the way. Over, oh, I'm sorry. No, I overstep. know. I like that. I like that. I know. I just want to say it because. But no, but what I'm saying is, is that the effect is not to do something amazing so that others will applaud. The point is, this is actually what we must do. You know, it's, I, I often use the example of a tree. A tree does not grow because people around it are saying, oh, go tree, go tree, right? Grow, 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 right? A tree grows because that's its nature. It must. It must keep pushing forward. It must be bringing fruit and, 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 and itself to the world. So, uh, like yesterday, you know, every week I have the opportunity to share with thousands of our students uh, uh, a lecture that I give on Saturday on Shabbat. And I was preparing for it. And I was saying to myself, you know, I was really excited about it. I often get excited about this wisdom. And I said, you know, I'm so excited to, to share. But then I realized, you know, just the fact that I got excited, about it, that's enough. So I hope this is clear. And tell me if it is, is that as we talk about appreciating our potential, pushing forward, living with audacity and overstepping to manifest that, let's bring it back to why. Not because you want to be lauded by by people, you want people to love you, and you're a great author, I'm a great lecturer, whatever whatever those words are. Thank you. <laughs> but but because this is actually the only way to happiness for me, if I am living my potential. It's a very, it's, is that clear? I, I really hope I made that clear, because, again, not if people listened to this podcast and started living in this way and manifested great things, and people loved them, they were happy, the people, and they did it for that, that's also great, right? It's not the end of the world, but... It's not the well. It's limited again, yes. right? And I think it goes back to I think if you actually do all of these things for the right reason, then it takes you away from the two things I said at the beginning. Where right now, right, even if you are thinking of yourself as a fraud, or you're thinking you can't do it, or you think that you can do it, it's still a lot of that is rooted in the ego, and it's very much connected to external, True. what people think of you, how they view you. So I think, and I'm happy you brought this up. I think the way to to get out of this whole limited belief system, but also living this existence is to not take credit for any of your good fortune, not for anything that actually you're, except for the negative things, because you are creating that really, or feeding it. All of the blessings and, for, and good fortune you have has very little to do with you. It's the light of the creator that's within you, right? So if we want to remove our ego, I love this verse, it's, it's, where is it from? It's nothing of me, right? Where it says that, that it's nothing of me. It was in the, in the month of Pisces, um, that that's like the idea for the month, meaning nothing that I have done. It's nothing with my talents, not my genius, not my perseverance. None of that has brought anything good to me in life. It's only with a connection to my source, to the creator. And I think that if we do that, if that's really the consciousness, then how could you ever fall prey to taking the things that you do very seriously in the wrong way, right? Or connected to what people think about you, because at the end of the day, it's not you. None of it's really you. Of course, you want to put all your effort into the things you do, but for them to have life and expansion and to keep creating, they need to come and be connected to the place we all go to and come from. Well, so yeah, I mean, so 
it's not yours, but it's through you. Yes, but how are you able to channel that? How does it go through you? How does it be something that you don't own, that you don't keep as yours, that you don't take all the credit for? To know that without connecting consistently to your source, the place we came from, the place we end up at, back again, as long as you're connected to that, then you really can't take anything too seriously. Not the negative, not the positive. Instead, you're just a being, a channel that right. constantly looks for ways to expand right. and to um, reveal. Yeah, that's a very, but it's a pretty high concept. I hope it's, you know, but, but for instance, because one of my, one of, one of the really the great teachers of the past hundred years, Ravashlag, he often writes that everything that he wrote, and he wrote unbelievably beautiful, revealed beautiful teachings. He says, none of it is mine. It's just that the generation needed this wisdom, so it came through me, right? And, and that's really what you're saying. It's not a diminishment of our accomplishments. It's a clarity of where it came from. It came through me, but not mine. But, but Precisely. I, but, but it's a beautiful thing. Like, for instance, I, my, my hope is every single day that I am a, a powerful conduit. And the only way, like you said, the only way I can be a conduit for, for unbelievable wisdom and, 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 and sharing goodness is if I am not taking ownership on it. Yes. And the thing is, this is what was very freeing for me, for me to get out of the shackles of being a perfectionist and even the imposter syndrome. I really stopped and said, okay, none of this really, you know, if people like me, if they don't, if some people like what I have to say, others don't, even if I affect what it became more about being right than doing if even if i influence one person in the world in a positive way that's enough and then that was the first step and then when i started to remove myself more and more from from all of it right i just wanted to be a channel and have light and energy and information and wisdom flow through me then i i couldn't even take any of this seriously and it didn't mean anything anymore because all that really mattered and i felt so complete and so alive in those moments where I was back to this consciousness of just let it go through me. Right. It's a, that's a beautiful concept. And one, again, that certainly is the way to continuously be able to manifest greatness, right? If you really, really start, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think for our listeners to, to begin with those who have never really um, focused on this consciousness, right? Of, of, even when you're being a parent, right? Or even if you're if you're trying to help somebody else, to really consciously remind yourself that the best scenario is if I don't see this as wisdom or great ideas coming from me, but really there's a more powerful source of wisdom and light and goodness and teaching, and that I want it to flow through me. Right, because by the way, when you put yourself in that situation, so what are you doing in those moments? You're listening to only the good voice within you, right? So you're connecting to that. And through this process, the best parts of you are revealed, actually. So you're tapping into your highest potential each and every time you have that consciousness. So I found that to be the perfect formula for me to get out of my head, out of my ego, stop taking myself so seriously. By the way, a deflated ego and an inflated ego, they're both coming from the same place. So whether you think badly of yourself or too highly from yourself, it's still connected to all that's external. So for me, it really, it shifted things in a profound way. I mean, clearly I still can uh, relate to some of these uh, things. So it's always work, but I, that was no, for sure. Freeing. One thing that I would add, I was actually having a conversation today with somebody. Um, we spoke about, you know, and I, living with audacity, pushing, overstepping. Anything that's important for you to become, to be, to do, make sure you're taking action. You know, th there's an understanding that, you know, I think we often think, you know, I am who I am, and I can either reveal it or not reveal it, I can do it or not do it. But the reality is that we become what we do. That, yes, we have unlimited potential, but let's use an example. Somebody who wants to help people who are uh, uh, recovering addicts, alcoholics. And he or she, you know, before this podcast, let's say, doubted their ability to do it. Now they hear this podcast and they're inspired. Okay, I have this limited, limitless potential. I believe that I should be overstepping. I should live or, with audacity. I'm, you know, I really want to do it. If you don't start taking action, 
no matter how much you you believe, you want to believe, you want to do, if you're not you, you're not becoming that person. So the understanding is that it's not just the, the thought about it, the consciousness is very important, but the doing, the actual action, is one of the greatest ways by which we begin to manifest that potential, and then you become that being, that person, the, having the ability. And, and it won't go perfectly the first time, the tenth time, the hundredth time, or the thousandth time, maybe even. But as long as you're pushing yourself to do, because I think, and you've spoken about this often, this 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 uh, talking versus doing. Mm. In, talk yeah, in this in this regard, where we do know, and hopefully accept that we have limitless potential, and and I, even though I mentioned before that it's, I do recommend for every single one of us to remind ourselves that once a day at least of how powerful we are, dormant, unless you're taking action every single day, you're not becoming that person. You're not manifest. You have no chance of manifesting that potential. So it's the consciousness, it's the thought, it's the reminder of my potential, but then do, 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 do. Do it well, do it poorly, it doesn't matter. But by doing, you become it. It's very, it's a very important to understand it. So let me ask you, sure. when was the last time you overstepped? Last time I overstepped. I have a question for you too. <laughs> um, uh, last time I overstepped. Trying to think because I know for me it's interesting. For me, it's I think a lot of the the small things in that. Yeah, I remember this. This is something really small, but I think it's you know it's an action, like you know something you know often you're you know you're walking down the street, and I when you you I know you often mention but somebody's like you walking down the street, and especially in a small town, and somebody says hello to you, like you really like that, right? The people who go out of I their do. way, yeah, and 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 often or and when that, we run by each other, I love that, you know, good morning hikers, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So by nature, by nature, you know, I I don't you know I've shared this before, and I'm not necessarily outgoing in that way, although most of my life is spent in that way. But but I always sort of in my mind, you know, are people gonna like you know like it or not like it? And one of the things that I've done recently is 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 when I'm walking down the street, I'll say hello to people. By the way, it's not always received well. Really, I but, haven't been with you when you've done. Yeah, I guess. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it must well, be really new. You. <laughs> so the point, the my point is that. You know, in some people's mind, in my mind, as I think about it logically, you know, maybe it's overstepping. Like I, you know, I'm, I'm not always necessarily excited when somebody stops me in the middle of the street. But I think, you know, you asked me about overstepping. I think that's, you know, I see that in a little bit of way of overstepping. Um, by the way, I think people are much more uh, open to to uh, uh, pretty women saying hello to oh, them. That's the a false, <laughs> that's an excuse you give yourself. Yeah, whatever. But I agree. Yeah. I agree. And we should that's all That's your overstep. big line when you don't want to do something. Oh, they're going to be nicer to, to a woman or whatever. No. Okay, Michael. <laughs> Sometimes Burke. it's true. Yeah. <sighs> My question to you. And I'm is, like, no, they'll be equally nice to you. Which is not always <laughs> yes, true. Yes, if you smile. Um, uh, a recent, well, that was kind of my question, but a recent time that you did or did not push yourself. It could be either one. Mm-hmm. By the way, to our listeners, play along. Um, I mean, I feel like my nature is more to push. Like, you know, clearly <laughs> over overachieving uh, aspect. But I think that for me, the real restriction is not to push. So you need to stop yourself from pushing. I mean, it depends on what context, like for me, I'll push in every area. Right. And um, usually what suffers is like my exhaustion. And so for me to wake up a little later or um, work out one hour less in a day, like that's real. And so I did that uh, yesterday and, uh, and it felt really good to actually honor that and not be like, you have to do everything at a hundred miles an hour or, you know, y- you didn't, you didn't do enough type of thing. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Oh, you have a better answer for me? <laughs> <laughs> that I think is the perfect answer. Oh, for you. Thank you. Is there anything else you wanted to share? No, do you have another right thought? I have one of my favorite, uh, before I get to the letter, I went over, over a little bit, but one of my um, favorite sections in the uh, in the prophets, there was a prophet, his name was Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, what? I'm going to keep singing. <laughs> keep going. Yeah. I, I think our <laughs> listeners are enjoying it. Keep going. I'm, I'll, I'll just take a sip while you're... <laughs> da, 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 da. I don't know all the words. Da, 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 da. 
Jo, is that the same song? To the world. Is I that don't know the first one. <laughs> the second one, I kind of know. All right, that's it. <laughs> that's it. So um, the second, the, the so the story of it, the way the book of Jeremiah begins, it's really this battle of everything we spoke about until now, where Jeremiah is being chosen to be a, a voice to the world, and he keeps diminishing himself, and. The, the the prophecy or the, sort of the message from God to Jeremiah is, before you were born, I knew you. Mm. A, a voice to the world, I have created you. Don't say I'm a child or a young man. For everywhere you go, I will be with you. And everything that I will give to you, you will say. And that, I think, for every single one of us, sort of, we we get stuck in, you know, I am a child. I'm, a, I'm you know, whether we're 50 years old, we still enough. view ourselves not enough. And I often think about it, and often I have the opportunity to share those words. Don't say, don't say it. Stop saying, I am too young, I am too this. For everywhere, I knew you, I knew your soul, I knew your potential, the light the Creator says, before you were born. And that's actually why you were born. You were born because you are great. You were born because you have so much to do in this world. You were born because you have such a strong voice to bring to the world. Everywhere I send you, you will go, and everything you speak, I will put it in your mouth. To me, it's it's one of the most inspiring, especially as it relates to this idea, for every single one of our listeners, to know before your soul came into this world, it was known. It was known how much you have to do, how powerful your voice is. Set aside that voice that says, I am not, I am not, I am true of this, or not enough of that. It's Everywhere in a children's you go, book. On the day you were born, this happened, that happened, the trees came together, like the whole world came to support you become. And imagine if every parent said that to their children when they came into the world and, and gave them that that was the voice in their head. Yeah. And again, it's interesting. Um, one of our children uh, often texts me in the morning to give them a blessing for the day. So today, when, 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 <laughs> when he texted me for the blessing, I, I said, may you really appreciate the greatness of your soul and manifest it throughout the day. And I think that's a message, yes, parents should give to the kids, but each one of us, you know, should be giving to ourselves every single day. Well, it's interesting. I wasn't really going to go into this, but um, oh, yeah. no, it just reminded me of the podcast we did a while ago about how just be like an okay parent. Right. Um, right. Uh, Donald, Donald Winnicott. And because there are parenting styles that increase the likelihood Good of imposter parenting. syndrome, which I thought was really interesting. So, um, <laughs> I mean, the the thing is, we can always blame our parents at the end of the day for our, our poor lives, right? And a lot of people do that do forever. I, Sadly, I, in their sure 70s this, even, yes, right? I, it's crazy. The parents are dead now and buried in the ground. And it's still like, if my mother had whatever. Um, so undeserved praise is one way that parents mess up their kids. If your parents or other significant adults gave you an acknowledgement for things that you didn't think you deserved praise for, you might have become instilled with the sense that you were a phony, which is interesting. I can, mm -hmm, I'm not going to give any more feedback about <laughs> that um, or no praise at all, which is the flip side. If you never receive praise at all, even for something impressive, like, you know, getting good grades or being a top athlete, you probably learn to think of yourself as inadequate and that you were rarely up to snuff. Um, so I thought that was really interesting or even the lack of entitlement. They're saying that, um, if you were disciplined as a child using language like your sister gets to sit in the front because, you know, she ate all of her dinner or, you know, these kinds of things, basically you think you're deserving is tied to a punishment or something you did or didn't do. So thanks, mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me, I won't get, again, I won't get it. Anybody who's ever watched Arrested Development, there's, that's kind of a theme uh, throughout that show. Thank you to all of our listeners. Thank you to all of you who send in your questions and stories again we, nice. we have a picture on this one. yes i'm not sure if they want us to no, share it so not. i won't put it on that <laughs> um so this is from Alyssa. uh it's a really beautiful letter it's a little bit uh uh you know long but i think it's so powerful i want to share all of it dear monica and michael i have been thinking about writing to you for a while to share how much of an impact you've had on my life so all of our listeners if you have any stories to share please please share them both because Monica and I really are inspired by them, but also I'm sure all of our, lis all of our listeners uh, would love to hear. I, I, so a little bit of history. I discovered that while uh, I moved when I was 
uh, 27 across the country. I discovered that while my geographic location may have changed, my patterns and problems did not. I had a spiritual awakening, or more like an aha moment, when I first realized that maybe it wasn't everyone else who had the issues. Maybe, just maybe, it was me. At that exact time in my life, when I was finally open to receiving it, Kabbalah came radiating, radiating into my life, and I've never looked back. I am just one example of someone who has been forever changed by the wisdom and the example that you have shared. You were there with me when my second son, Elijah, was born at 28 weeks, weighing just one pound, three ounces. About halfway through the pregnancy, when doctors discovered that there was a problem, I knew right then and there that I was going to look at the situation as an opportunity. An opportunity to grow closer to God, an opportunity to strengthen and appreciate the relationship with those who are most important to me. I had learned that blessings are based on consciousness, so no matter what happens, if I grow closer to the Creator, then isn't it really a blessing? That was the hardest time in my life, surrendering to my Creator while, of course, begging for my child to live. Elijah was born in Rosh Hashanah 2000, 2017. And I was able to surrender as I was being wheeled into the operating room for an emergency C-section. I totally let go. Hearing his tiny little cry for the first time was the most beautiful sound I have ever heard in my lifetime. Elijah is now three and is still facing many challenges, including chronic lung disease and cerebral palsy. Hearing your story about your son Josh reminds me every day that in many ways I am so beyond blessed. The beautiful blessings that have come from being Elijah's mom are immeasurable. I totally can see that I'm a, such a better, stronger, and more loving person now versus if I had never gone through this experience. Instead of giving in to the doubts and fears, I choose life and hope every single day. Mm. So beautiful. Elijah is a very special soul who spreads light and laughter wherever he goes. He is the true teacher. In 2019, I finally was able to get sober after battling drug and alcohol addiction my entire life. You were there when I hit rock bottom. Watching Kabbalah University was the only moment of peace that I could find when I was crippled with fear and anxiety, scared that I was going to die at any second and leave my little boys without a mother. I was able to let go and truly ask the Creator to help for the very first time. Once again, surrendering was what brought about the peace that I had been searching for my entire life. I haven't touched a drink since. I'm happy to say that now I am able to share my light and love with others who struggle with addiction. I found the most beautiful gift in being able to turn my pain into sharing, to sharing with others who are struggling. In this way, whenever I experience pain now, I can more easily see how it can become a benefit to others. This truly diminishes the actual experience of pain. And the crazy part is, I am able to find joy in the places that used to be the darkest. So thank you for all that you do in spreading this invaluable wisdom to the world. I am inspired every time that I listen to your podcast, not just by the actual wisdom that you share, but by the example of your relationship. Marriage is hard for me. I'm very independent, in parentheses, i.e. scared. But seeing a marriage that is based on true love and spiritual growth gives me hope of what, what I can achieve if I continue to do the work. It's already made a huge difference in my perception and experience of marriage, and I'm so very excited about what the future holds. Thank you again for being you and for continuing to push yourselves to share this wisdom. With love and light, Alyssa. Oh, that's beautiful. Really, really beautiful. Yes. And um, first of all, so thank you, Alyssa, for sharing with us and for allowing us to share with all of our listeners. And to all of our listeners, please send all of your stories certainly you continue to send your questions as i said it inspires monica and myself and i'm sure i'm sure that it brings great light and inspiration to all of our listeners so as we always say <laughs> make sure that you share this podcast with your friends with your family make sure you give five star reviews on apple Podcasts and everywhere else that you get your podcasts make sure to continue sending in your questions we base a lot of the podcasts around your questions even if we don't get directly to them topics certainly stories and um you know as i say we do this because again i enjoy spending this time with monica but also more importantly the the hopefully inspiration and wisdom that it brings to our listeners and do what you can to bring this 
wisdom, this podcast to more and more people. I hope you enjoyed listening to this podcast as much as we enjoyed recording. Bye.